a few questions directly from some some people I've actually asked. First one is, what is SHBG and what is the purpose of SHBG? I'm sure you get that one a lot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And you know, the more I look into that, again, rabbit trail, you know, it's a glycoprotein supposedly made by the liver in the blood that, that they say, you know, specifically binds sex hormones. Whereas like, you know, albumin, we all kind of know albumin or we think it's kind of loose and all that albumin binds, a lot of shit. Binds, binds everything they say. And then, you know, a lot of this is based on computer modeling. I'm just going to tell you that uh, if you go really look at the older SHBG studies, it's a lot of, again, assumption calculations with modeling. They're not to be able to directly test sex hormone binding globulin to testosterone is going to be a lot trickier, especially inside a human being. Yeah. Um, but supposedly it binds, that was the thought for a long time. It binds the sex hormones so they can't be used. They transport, they'll disassociate from the sex hormone binding globulin to eventually get in through the tissue and do their thing. So recently there's been some speculation that sex hormone binding globulin bound to sex hormones actually does still get into the tissue and function. And that actually kind of makes sense in a way. I mean, I, it could be either one, you know, the way we're designed, maybe it does work that way. Maybe the, maybe our thoughts on bound versus unbound being useful or not are two separate categories altogether. So I think that's, that's again, a philosophical discussion that would have to be fleshed out. We do, we are a lot of times able to correlate SHBG levels sometimes with how people feel when they're on treatment. Um, even that speculation, because I do have guys that don't fit that range. But, you know, a lot of times in general, you see these super low SHBGs with guys with diabetes, insulin resistance, oh, fatty know, liver and all that stuff. Fatty man. liver. And that's, that is what it is. So those guys are already going to have other, other issues going on metabolically when they take testosterone. A healthy person who just has low SHBG, let's say they've been on testosterone for years and it's suppressed it or, sure. or whatever. We feel like, and we don't know for sure that more frequent dosing will a lot of times help those guys feel better than doing like a once a week dose or twice a week. And that was my situation. You know, I, and I correlated it with how I felt when I was on injections, I had an SHBG of 11. I wanted to try more frequent dosing, but I switched to cream to do it and yeah. I felt better, but I can't claim that I felt better because of my low SHBG and my daily oh. dose just because cream may just make me feel better. You know, it is what it is. Um, we know that no, High SHBG will often come down when you treat someone with, with an androgen, right? We know that. And their free testosterone will go up when it's when it's calculated or measured either way. So there is a correlation between free testosterone and SHBG. Whether that's the causative part or not of the free, I'm not clear on. I, I sure. you know, you really read the papers the way they word it. They're very careful and say correlated with. They don't claim the causative part. And yeah. so we, we insert the causative part in our minds. So I'm on the fence with that. I don't think it's, I don't think we make a bigger deal about SHBG a lot of times than we should. That's become like another hot topic. People because want to chase again, it for some reason. They just people want to chase, chase it. People want to chase data. They think data is, I'm like, data is meaningless without an interpretation. It's just, a, it's just data. You don't know if it doesn't, how do you know what it means, right? Like all these people that want to check every lab. I want to check everything. I'm like, why? What do you, what do you check gonna... a said right? Like yeah, why? why? Yeah. Yeah. It's doesn't the same make sense. principle. No, it's the same principle. Um, so I do think in general with SHBG, we can kind of make some certain, it helps us guide some of our clinical um, practices and at times. Like, well, you may want to try more frequent dosing if you have it low. If you have a super high SHBG, you may be feeling that way because you're high SHBG. So you need testosterone, even though it's normal range, your free T is like single digit. Right. And, and so you do see that. And so a lot of times those guys, you get them on testosterone, it overcomes that SHBG and they feel better. And that's, yeah. the, that's how you overcome high SHBG. You don't need to take boron. You don't need to you know go high carb. You don't need to artificially manipulate your SHBG. If you need the hormone, take the hormone and that'll get the job done. That's the other big issue I have with the, Let's change this endogenous marker instead of just going to the, here's what you're going to need to take to feel better. Uh, it's very rare that you're going to see somebody take boron and go from a free T of two nanograms per deciliter to a free T of 25 nanograms per deciliter. Yeah. You're not going to do that. You, you need I mean, to take testosterone for that. Yeah. Just take more testosterone. Just exactly. tweak your dose a little bit. No, and even like some of the boron studies, I mean, they're done like elderly patients. I mean, yeah. who cares if it would have changed five points an elderly person who's already deficient? Doesn't matter. That's exactly right. And they 
people need to understand the difference between a statistically significant change and a clinically significant change. Just because you can go lose weight and change your testosterone by 100 points, do you feel any better overall? You might feel better because you lost some weight, but you're okay. You went from a testosterone of 300 to 400. You still have all the low T symptoms. Yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, I changed 100 points. So what? Yeah. It, it, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're chasing numbers. You're still in that number mindset, basically. Tonkat Ali increased it by 200%. Oh, so you, yeah. you went to like yeah. from 50 to 100. So what? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, tribulus. At that point. Tribulus terrestrius or Clomid. Look at look at my numbers on Clomid. I'm like, how you feel? Oh, I feel like crap. I'm like, so the numbers don't really matter, right? You know, there's a, there's something else going on.